You can worry yourself to death, but you can't worry yourself to life. And Dr. Charles Mayo, the, uh, the famous Mayo Clinic, said, Worry affects the circulation, the heart, the gland, and the whole nervous system. I have never met a man or known a man to die of overwork, but I have known a lot who died of worry. Do you worry about worry? Does it kind of nag at you 24-7? And if I said that Jesus forbids worry, Jesus forbids worry, would you then start kind of shaking your head in despair and kind of go, ah, oh, no. My aim um, this morning is not to create more worry uh, in your life, but to work through what Jesus says about the subject and give a challenge to each one of us to lighten up on worry. Uh, our Bible passage this week in Readers 1 is Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Um, and you're going to read that passage, I hope, several times over this, uh, this, this next week. Uh, and you will see Jesus commanding us, his followers, do not worry, do not worry, do not worry. You find three times to read that passage. And by the time you get to Friday, and you turn up the message here, uh, those words are going to be drumming into your mind. Um, the words of Jesus, do not worry. And his command uh, means is meant to keep his followers from getting hurt because worry hurts us, harms us. Uh, it affects people in their relationships. It strangles people. It kind of chokes them. It affects even people's sleep. It destroys people's faith. Jesus provides, I think in this passage, three prescriptions for overcoming worry. And notice that these prescriptions for overcoming worry require action. You know, if you get a prescription from the doctor and you go, that's nice, and you pin it on your fridge or something, I'm not going to do anything. It requires action. It requires going down to the pharmacy, <coughs> getting the, the medicine, the tablet, whatever it is, and taking it. And this prescription, these three prescriptions from the Lord require us to do something about them. And I hope that we will do something and overcome some of our worries. Because it's about attitude, it's about life, it's about value adjustments. And it requires repentance, uh, seeking divine help, and a real honest to goodness evaluation of our personal life. A lot to cover in a few minutes. I kind of not going to cover it in detail, but just kind of take it in. And first prescription, make the right decision. Make the right decision. Uh, the first thing I noted and wrote down the other day when I was reading through this passage was, if our life is about material stuff, we will worry. If our life is all about material stuff, we're going to worry. Um, we start with verse 25 in our reading, and uh, verse 25 begins with the word, therefore. And we need to look back at what the therefore is, therefore. And previous to that little passage, and it'd be good to read that during the week as well if you can, uh, is all about treasure and priorities. Treasure and priorities. Jesus says there, uh, what we decide our treasure is, that will be our priority. That will be what we serve or whom we serve throughout our life. Jesus tells us that a worry-free life is a result 
of making the right decision. A decision to prefer non-perishable um, things and durable things and eternal and heavenly things over treasures that don't last. We worry so much about stuff. And let's get it straight. We know it, but let's just get it straight. Nothing we worry about on this earth is going to last. It's all perishable. It's all going to get destroyed. It's all going to be wrecked at some point. It will never, ever last. And Jesus therefore says they aren't that important. Heavenly, spiritual, eternal, kingdom things, they will last. And that's where our focus should be. If we are going to be focusing on material things, on earthly stuff, we're going to worry. That's what I said. Because we're going to worry, it's going to break, it's going to reflect, it's going to destroy, it's going to get taken, it's going to get worse. Our focus must be on eternal, heavenly things. And we need to get clear in our mind what so-and-so thinks of us. Or that stain on the carpet. Or that problem with work or with our neighbour is actually temporary. It may seem like it's lasting a little while, or it may sort of overwhelm us for that moment, but it's all temporary. It's not going to last forever and ever. Um, see that spot on the screen? Oh, you can't see that spot on the screen, I see for me now. Why does he keep doing this? Don't worry. Yeah, yeah there's very much ties in what people say last week. Now you see that spot on the screen. Right. Um, if that's your worry about whatever right now, let's kind of again put it in perspective. How significant is that worry, as big as it looks at this moment, how significant is that worry that's going on in your mind even perhaps now? Now I've brought up the subject, now you're going to be thinking about it. How significant, how big is that worry um, when it comes to eternal kingdom things? I'm still going to say this word. Uh, maybe you think, well, actually, in, when it comes to kind of godly things, it's not that big. Mm, I, yeah, when I think about God's kingdom, when I think about eternity, it's actually not that big. We're talking about perhaps just a worry for a few weeks or a few months, but compared with eternity, it's not that big. It's not that big a picture, is it? Right. See, it's getting perspective. We're talking about eternity. We're talking about God. We're talking about being with him forever and ever and ever and ever. And our worry, as big as it might seem right now, compared with eternity, it depends on our perspective, what we're looking at, what we're valuing. <laughs> we get that in our mind then our worries will diminish at least. Let's take our mind off the stuff that we know is going to rot, going to mess up, going to go wrong, someone's going to say something, whatever it is. We know that. But compared with eternity, what's more? Real treasure, heavenly, eternal um, things are real treasure, not worldly stuff. Jesus says himself, life is more than food and clothes. 
The pagans, they worry about these things, but you, says Jesus, shouldn't be worrying about those things. Because life is much more invaluable, much more important, much bigger than things like what you're going to wear or what you look like and possessions and stuff. Life is eternal. That's your treasure. That's the thing you should be looking to. Eternity. And when your treasure safe in Christ, then you and I can be much more one for it. And you have to decide. It's a decision. This is a prescription. You have to decide. Am I going to live for earthly treasures? Or a heavenly treasure? Earthly things mean worry for the rest of your life. If you're going to just keep focusing on all the earthly things, you're just going to keep on worrying. But heavenly treasure, focusing on that, that means peace. Okay, that's the first description. Uh, second one, trust the right father. Trust the right father. Um, twice, Jesus points to the heavenly father as reason for not worrying in this passage. It's as if Jesus is saying in those verses, have you forgotten who your father really is? He's saying, do not worry when you've got a heavenly father. Because if you're worried and you've got a heavenly father, that's inconsistent. How can you worry when you've got such a, a wonderful heavenly father that is all he is? I'm leaving a list out some of things. There are followers of Christ who need to rediscover Father God. Now some relate with God as they relate to their earthly father or the earthly parent. And they get a bad experience with that, and so they struggle to accept God as a loving parent. And now I've come up with a number of people and talk with them about that. But God is not an earthly parent. You can't put them on equal footing. God is not an earthly parent. He is a wonderful, heavenly Father who knows us inside out and yet still loves you to death. You want proof? He sent Jesus Christ to go through hell so you didn't have to. You can trust him. You can trust him 100% really. So that's the second description. Trust the right Father. Because if you put your trust in this eternal heavenly Father, again the worry will be. Third description, pursue the right ambition. Um, I've touched on this already, but let me put it in terms of verse 33. What are you seeking in life? Uh, may take a moment for you to really take that in. It might take a little while perhaps during this week as you're reading through this passage again and again and, and praying about it. Kind of ask that question. What are you seeking? What is it that you're really pursuing? What is your ambition if you like in life? And many people will come up with one of the three P's if not all. Uh, peace, as long as I have some peace in my life, that's what I'm really looking for. Uh, pleasure, I need to get some pleasure in life, I need to feel happy. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters, people say. Or purpose. And people seek after those three things, or any number of those three things. Peace, pleasure, purpose. And they're all the things that we tend to go after. That's kind of a natural instinct within us. Where so many fail is that they seek peace and pleasure and purpose all the wrong places. So many turn to money and thrills, quick fix, booze, drug sex, exercise, travel, concerts, pour themselves into work, family, whatever it is, 
They're kind of after peace, pleasure and purpose, but they're doing it all the wrong way because it's all temporary. Little things. Little things that keep you going for a, a few days, a few hours, a few months, whatever. They can pour themselves into that. Do any of those things bring lasting peace, pleasure and purpose? No. Most of them actually bring more worry. Worry is the opposite of contentment, which should be the, the believer's state of mind. The Apostle Paul said, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in and sorry, in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength to live in this form. A Christian's contentment is found in God, not other stuff. The stuff lets us down very quickly. Only in God that we find that constant, eternal peace, pleasure, purpose. And so it says in verse 33, Seek first the kingdom, God's kingdom. Seek God first, because he is most important, he is eternal, he is always going to be there. Seek the kingdom, get your priorities sorted out. Then he says all the other things we are talking about, the food, the clothes, the provision, all these things will be added to you. You will find the rest at their right time in the right way. It's why I say so often when it comes to just tithing, you tithe first. If you give kingdom stuff first, and then everything else will be added to you. Some people like to do it the other way around. And it should be, therefore, when you're seeking kingdom stuff, it should be worship more than worry. Worship more than worry. So, if you've lived in worry up until now, <coughs> it's time to make an important change in your life. Can I ask you something? You don't have to answer that though. How much do you worry? Kind of think about how much of my time, how much of my day, how much of my week is all about worry. <coughs> do you think it's a, a trust issue with you about this? <coughs> that you're kind of thinking, actually, I, I'm not fully trusting God, which is why I am worrying about this, that, and the other. Is it that you're relying more on this earthly stuff more than eternal treasure? You kind of analyse your worry. It's a big issue. This is why I cover it today and I like to cover it on a regular basis. And during this week of reading this passage in Readers 1, and I hope you do, just keep reading it. Read the conversion. Read it, you know, however you like it. And praying about it. And try hard to work this through what Jesus is really saying in this passage. We'll look at it again tonight in our study time. Come with your worries, come with your questions. Um, but I really hope and pray that this week those who really have an issue with worrying in life. What kind of say, I'm not going to go to the rest of this year the same way as I did last year about worry. I'm going to really, just this week, I'm going to work this thing through so I get my priorities right. <coughs> Eternal, earthly stuff, you know, all those things, just work through these prescriptions. Uh, go online and listen to the message again. Just to remind you, whether it's audio or video. And 
And I really do pray that those here who have many worries going on in their life, you'll get the right perspective. And those worries will go from Heavenly Father, you are a God of peace, and so often we are warriors, and turmoil reigns in our lives. <coughs> Thank you for those words that Jesus gave all those years ago, which are still very relevant to us today, about worrying. And Lord, let us not have a day go by this week that doesn't have us praying about, talking with you, reading about, worrying, that we might get it into true perspective, the things that we worry about, and analyse whether they're just earthly things or whether we ought to be looking to heavenly things. Now, Father, we would pray for those who are struggling in life much more than we are today. We pray for those who are victims of flood at this time and are worried about the homes that they consider safe and has all their stuff inside. Lord, we pray that you might give them a word of encouragement, a word of of looking at, at the bigger picture. We pray for those emergency services who are working to, to help uh, and aid those in trouble. Father, we, we zoom away from the map and we see there is a lot of unrest in our world. We think of Syria, but many other cities around our world that are struggling with riots and unrest because they are worried and they're thinking of earthly stuff and treasures here on earth. Father, again I pray that we might know your peace and your purpose and be your pleasure in our lives. That the things that we pursued in the past will just fade away and you will replace with that lasting, that everlasting peace and pleasure and purpose. Lord, hear the prayer of your people, for we come in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs>